Hello, and welcome to another live broadcast with MedStar Health. My name is Michelle Bowman, and today we're live at MedStar Health Bel Air Medical Campus with vascular surgeon Dr. Maggie Arnold discussing varicose and spider veins. If you have questions for Dr. Arnold, or if you want to learn more about available treatments for varicose veins, stick around, share this broadcast with your friends on social media, and feel free to ask us questions in the comments. So welcome, Dr. Arnold. Thank you so much for speaking with us today. Michelle, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here today. A little shout out that everybody's excited at my house because it's the last day of school. I have two boys, seven and eight, and they are really ready for school to be over <laughs> and summer to start. Um, I am a board certified vascular surgeon and I'm new to MedStar, but I'm not new to Baltimore. And I'm really excited to share with you a little bit more about the treatment of varicose veins. That's my primary role at MedStar. I'm also very active in resident teaching and training, and I'm passionate about making healthcare accessible and available to all. Thank you so much again. So let's dive into our questions. Um, so first thing, what are varicose and spider veins? That's a great question. So varicose and spider veins are basically enlarged superficial veins. They can develop anywhere on the body, but they tend to develop on the legs. Spider veins you can often see sometimes also on the face. And uh, the difference between varicose veins and spider veins is that varicose veins tend to be larger. People often describe them as ropey, whereas spider veins often look like little tiny tree bursts or um, spider is a, a reason that we call them that is they're just like little spindly tiny veins that you see and they're a little bit more superficial. So thank, thanks for explaining the difference between those two. Um, how can you tell if you have varicose or spider veins? So the thing about varicose veins and spider veins is that you can look at your legs and see if you have them. So one often way to look is to stand up and put the full pressure on your legs and look at your legs. You may see bulging veins or you may notice that you have small blue or red superficial veins that look like uh, starburst patterns. And those are spider veins or the bigger ropier veins are varicose veins. Sometimes they can be hard to see if you're lying flat or your legs are elevated. So if you're concerned about it, I would encourage you to just stand in one position for a couple of minutes and then take a look at your legs. Great, thank you. What causes varicose veins? So I get asked that question a lot. Uh, I think that the biggest answer is we don't entirely know, but what contributes to it is excess pressure on the veins. So veins are responsible for turning blood from your feet back to your heart. But veins don't have muscle to get that blood back to your heart. Mm -hmm your calf muscle acts like a pump and it squeezes the blood. Every time you step, your calf muscle contracts and it squeezes the blood like toothpaste out of a tube. You have valves inside of the veins that prevent that blood from moving backwards. Over time, those valves can weaken and it can cause the blood to pool in your veins. This can cause the veins to distend and the walls to get weak and that can lead to varicose veins. Thanks so much for explaining that. Um, if you are just joining us today, we're here at MedStar Health, Bel Air Medical Campus with Dr. Maggie Arnold, vascular surgeon with MedStar Health. Today we're discussing varicose and spider veins, what causes them, available treatments, and much more. So as you watch the broadcast, feel free to share your questions in the comments and share this with your friends on social media. So continuing with our questions, um, are, there, are certain people more prone to getting varicose veins? Certainly. So it t seems to be more prevalent in women. However, men can certainly get varicose veins as well. Some conditions such as pregnancy or being overweight increase the pressure on the veins and that can lead to more varicose vein formation. I've had a lot of patients who are women who tell me that the first time they noticed their varicose veins was after a first pregnancy. Other conditions like smoking can also contribute to varicose vein formation. So there's a lot of factors to consider there. Um, are varicose veins primarily a cosmetic issue or can they be assigned with something more serious? 
That's another great question. I think that when people first start to notice varicose veins, oftentimes they come in because of a cosmetic issue. However, varicose veins can cause symptoms that can um, cause patients to be in uncomfortable um, situations. They can get painful sores that don't heal. Patients often describe a heaviness sensation to their legs or a burning sensation. Um, so while the varicose veins in and of themselves aren't dangerous per se, they can cause a lot of discomfort and make patients um, come to seek treatment. Very important to know. Um, what happens during an evaluation for, for varicose veins? What can patients expect? So when patients come to my office for varicose veins, the first thing we'll do is talk to them. I want to know a lot about them and what their life is like. What do they do every day? Are they on their feet a lot? Um, do they spend a lot of time in one position, maybe at an office or at a desk? So then, then the next thing that we'll do is examine the patient. And I always have the patient usually put on shorts, but if you come to my office in a skirt that you can lift up and I can see your legs, that's great too. But I do want to look at your whole legs. I love to have patients stand up in my office because as I said before, it's really hard to evaluate the extent of the varicose veins when patients are lying on my examination table. So I'll have them stand up and put their full body weight on their legs and then take a good look. And the other thing I like to do is ask patients to point out to me areas that are troubling for them so that I can really get to know what's most bothersome for them personally. After that, we typically order a test called a venous reflux ultrasound study. This is a painless study. It's an ultrasound which is similar to what women get when they're pregnant to look at the baby. And we do a test to look to see how well your valves are closing. Uh, it's a simple test. It takes about 45 minutes and it allows us to, accept, um, sorry, to assess whether or not the valves are functioning properly. Great answer. Um, so after your evaluation, you're probably looking around for uh, potential um, things to help your condition. So um, are compression stockings useful um, for treating varicose veins? And if so, how do they work and who exactly should wear them? So that's a great question. And the first line of treatment for varicose veins is definitely conservative management. So there it starts with some lifestyle changes and also compression stockings. So by lifestyle changes, again, most of us have jobs where we're sitting at a desk. I think that that's mm -hmm. become a very modern problem. Getting up and walking around and activating your calf muscle so that you return the blood back to your heart by squeezing those veins is a great thing to do. Another thing you can do is just take some time to elevate your legs during your office, uh, office day or when you're at home, uh, even five minutes every hour, put them up on a step stool or something to help the blood drain. Compression stockings are something that I prescribe for all of my patients, and essentially they work by squeezing the vein to help the blood from pooling to keep that from um, distending the vein and the wall getting weak. Now I will say that while compression stockings are very effective, they won't get rid of varicose veins, but they can help manage the symptoms. Okay. Um, so that, that's a good segue, segue to our next question. What are uh, tr available treatment options for varicose veins? Oh, thanks for asking. So if conservative measurements don't help or they don't fix the problem completely, then we do have some interventions that we can do uh, that are very successful and they can often be done in the office. One of them is called a venous closure where we insert a small catheter or tube inside the vein and we use heat to close that vein. What that does is it prevents the um, blood from going in the vein that's not working properly and it makes the blood go into the veins that are working properly. That procedure is done in the office. It is, um, causes minimal pain and discomfort and patients are up and moving the same day. So um, I think you touched on this a little earlier. Is there a cure for varicose veins or is ongoing treatment necessary? So when we do the closure procedure, that often treats the saphenous vein, which is the main vein that runs on the inside of your leg. Oftentimes this can get rid of varicose veins, but occasionally there are varicose veins that don't stem from the saphenous vein and they may require additional procedures. 
The other thing I'd like to say is that sometimes, even though we get rid of one varicose vein, that may not necessarily prevent other veins for, from forming. So if you do have a saphenous vein ablation, it's a good idea to then afterwards continue to do those things that we talked about in terms of elevating your legs, doing exercise, um, and wearing compression if necessary to help uh, mitigate new varicose veins from forming. Thank you. Um, so after you receive your treatment, um, is there any bruising that occurs? And if so, how long uh, do you think that'll last? So most patients will experience some mild bruising. It's typically um, tolerated very well. It usually only lasts a couple of weeks. Um, and again, the treatment is um, very well tolerated in the office and the post-op recovery has is, is been great for patients. Good to know. Um, is, ver is treatment for varicose veins covered by insurance? Yes, so most insurance companies cover varicose vein treatment. Uh, and before you have your procedure, our office will work with your insurance company to ensure that your treatment is covered. Now on a side note, spider vein treatment often doesn't get covered by insurance, but we will help you work through um, having your spider veins treated. Those are treated a little bit differently than varicose okay. veins. We do a procedure called sclerotherapy, where we inject a, um, a chemical into the little tiny spider veins to close them down. Um, that often is not covered by insurance, but we can help get that covered. Great, great to know. Um, so why is it important that patients see a board-certified vascular surgeon for treating varicose veins? I think that's really important. One of the benefits to seeing a board-certified vascular surgeon for treatment of veins is that while uh, a lot of providers can do vein treatment procedures, vascular surgeons are able to look for other, uh, other problems that may be going on with your legs that aren't varicose veins, for instance, peripheral arterial disease. So what you may think is a problem with your veins could be a life-threatening arterial problem. We're able not only to diagnose that, but also to work it up and potentially treat it. So we really offer a full spectrum of care. That's very beneficial. Um, thank you so much. Uh, we have a few questions from social media, so we're going to take some time Great. to answer those. So first question comes from uh, Deborah. She said she, that she has had four to five surgeries or procedures for varicose veins. Um, why do they keep coming back? That's a really good question. And again, I think a lot of this goes to the fact that I don't know that we totally understand why some people are more prone to varicose veins than others. The initial procedure that we try to do is to close the main vein, the saphenous vein. And there's also a vein on the back of your calf called the small saphenous vein that we can close. But the, sometimes patients get varicose veins that don't stem from those main veins. And we will um, do a procedure called a stab phlebectomy, which can help get rid of those. Again. It doesn't prevent new ones from forming, but lifestyle changes oftentimes can help with that, mm -hmm. um, whether it's weight loss, um, stopping smoking, wearing compression stockings, and elevating your legs. All of those things can potentially help new varicose veins from forming. Our next question is from Karen. She asks, is it true that you're more susceptible to getting varicose veins if you cross your legs? I know I'm doing it right now. You may not be able to see it. I've but. heard that a lot. I cross my legs all the time. I think the reason that that comes up is because when you cross your legs, you are increasing the blood the pressure inside your legs. You're decreasing the ability for the blood flow to go back to your heart. Um, it's also like wearing tight pants. So anything that sort of increases the pressure inside the vein and prevents the um, good return of blood could decrease that. I think most people probably don't cross their legs for such a sustained period of time that mm -hmm. that would happen. But again, getting up and moving is a really good way to prevent that. Good, good. It's important to get your yeah, blood pumping. Yeah, keep moving, <laughs> exactly. Um, next question is from Donna. She asks, um, can varicose veins cause leg cramps? So a lot of times the symptoms of varicose veins vary by patient. Some patients uh, will experience cramping or a burning sensation. Um, some patients feel a heaviness. But again, I think that goes back to what you asked earlier about why it's important to see a board certified vascular surgeon. Because leg cramps can be a symptom of more serious problems such as peripheral arterial disease. And a vascular surgeon will be able to help differentiate between a varicose vein problem and something like PAD. Great. Um, we have a question from Meredith. Um, she says, why do spider veins form and is there a way to prevent 
them or reduce the chance of getting them. So again, spider veins and varicose veins fall in the same family. Um, they form because there's some increased pressure on the vein and those little veins uh, have weakened walls. The way to prevent them, sometimes doing things like wearing compression stockings, walking, elevating your legs can help. Some people just happen to be more prone to spider vein formation than others, and you can do everything right and still get spider veins. We treat spider veins with sclerotherapy, but that doesn't prevent new spider veins from forming. So I know it's frustrating mm -hmm. for a lot of people, but we can help treat the ones that you have and um, hope to help you prevent new ones from forming. Great, that's great. Um, we have a question from Caroline. It's a good question. She wants to know how do we schedule an appointment? Oh, that's a great <laughs> question. So um, you can call my office, 443-777-1900, and the women at the office would love to help set you up with an appointment. Um, we are seeing patients every, on Mondays and every other Wednesday, Wednesdays at the Bel Air facility, uh, and it's a great facility. Uh, we are very good about social distancing here, uh, so I'd love to see you. Great. Um, we have a question from Lex. Um, she says uh, she wants to know more about spider vein elimination and any possible home treatments. I don't know of any home treatments for spider vein. Um, I can tell you what we do in the office, which is sclerotherapy. So we use a tiny, tiny needle. It's just so small, I can't even tell you. And we inject a substance called polydocanol into the branch of the spider vein, and it basically closes that little tiny vein down. Um, and it's a great treatment. It will get rid of the spider veins that we can. Again, it won't prevent new spider veins from forming. I think that the things that you can do to prevent them are exercise and compression, but again, sometimes that just some people are more prone to them, and despite all your best intentions, you may still end up with spider veins. Okay, I think we have another question from uh, Jill. She says, uh, do you have any photos of varicose veins? Uh, maybe we can share those in the comments and the chat as well. Yeah, Facebook so Live. that's a great question, and I don't have um, my media available right now, mm -hmm. but we can have some resources so you can see what some um, varicose and spider veins look like. Sure. Yeah, that would be a good demonstration just to know the difference mm -hmm. between the two. Um, so with that said, that wraps up our broadcast for today. Thank you so much, Dr. Arnold, for spending time with us today. We really appreciate it. And thank you so much for sharing your questions and sharing this on social media. For more information on varicose veins and available treatments or to schedule an appointment with Dr. Arnold, please call 877-828-VEIN. That's 877-828-8346. And we'll see you next time.